Well, welcome to the Centre for Christian Spirituality. As we reflect on the Gospel reading for the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time, and uh, just a slight comment or a small comment to say how much I enjoy it when we are able to do it together. How much more it means to me than when I, I do it alone in the preparation for Sunday liturgy. So thank you for joining David and Virginia and I as together we, we reflect on the Gospel reading of this Sunday. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, as for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another, all will be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near, do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and plagues and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defence in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. I, I find there are three parts to the gospel here. Um, the first relates to the destruction of Jerusalem, the second to the end time, and the third to the time in between those uh, in which um, Christians will be persecuted. Um, the temple was important for Luke. You might recall that it began, the whole story began, with the angel coming to Zechariah when he was in the temple. Mm. So the temple has figured largely. And not in this text, but elsewhere in the Gospel, it's clear that for Luke, the destruction of Jerusalem is the result of the failure of the people to take advantage of the opportunity that God had given them, that God had sent the final prophet, as it were, his son, um, but they have not accepted him. And the destruction of Jerusalem is that symbolic rejection um, that is um, the result of that. The second thing is looking towards the end time. Each of the synoptic gospels have a, um, a discourse that's called the eschatological discourse, the discourse about the last times. And they use apocalyptic language, which is usually the language um, that one uses about speaking uh, of the end times. But um, it's all bound up together with the immediate destruction of Jerusalem, the persecution of the Christians, and the final end of time. So the three of them are brought together. Um, it doesn't say a lot about the end time, it gives signs, but they're the sort of apocalyptic signs that we find rather abundantly in the scriptures. Perhaps the third part is the one that most interests us because it reflects on the fact that just as Jesus has been persecuted and opposed, his followers will be persecuted and opposed. And it talks about all the various ways that they will be opposed. And when we look at the history of the Christian community, we find that that has been a reality. And it's a reality today. 
that in some parts of the world we see um, the, the extreme elements of that where people are killed because of their belief mm. in Jesus. Here in Australia we don't have that um, extremism but I think the point is that um, opposition can make it difficult to lead the life of the disciple. And I think that we in this country live in a society that is less user-friendly to religious people and particularly to Catholic people. And that to actually say, I am a Catholic, takes a lot more courage than many of our Catholic people mm. have. So we can live in a type of persecution that is not physical, but it's there in the sense that it makes it difficult for us to profess the faith that we want to profess and to share that um, faith with others. I was reading something this morning that talked about the fact that um, Australians believe that religion is discriminated against, that most mm -hmm. people believe that. Mm -hmm. But alongside of that was the fact that pe most people thought that religious people should keep it to themselves. And that's another way of really discriminating against religion, making it something that you've got to keep yourself and therefore it's not something that you can speak about mm. and share with others. So I think the reality of which Jesus spoke about um, is a reality that we experience, not in the extreme as it is in other countries, but nevertheless one that can affect us in a very significant way. I, I, I think a, a point you made, David, is something when we were growing up, I'm sure, where religion and politics was something that we should keep they were very personal realities, That's but right. now they've become public fear, haven't yes. they? Mm. But, but one of the points that I, I hear coming through this, and, and you certainly alluded to it, is that uh, it, it's how significant the Word of God is in this day. It's not yes. the story of yesterday, but it's a story that lives in our experience today, and that as faith people, we are confronted in many different ways in our society. Here in Australia, you know, the sex abuse has really changed the face of the church and yes. the way in which we engage with people and people wanting to walk away as a consequence of this and why show allegiance to this. So what is it out of the word for me that kind of gives me hope and, uh, and becomes the challenge? I think it's, it's uh, the need for perseverance, the need for patience, Maybe that's summed up in the very last line of what we shared in the Gospel, Virginia, David. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. Yes. And so the Lord is inviting us, I think, through this. We've got to trust in spite of the turmoil yes. because it's trust in me that will enable you to win through. Mm. Look, for me, the word that struck me was this word ridiculed. Mm. And um, it's only natural to avoid being ridiculed. However, I think as you mature, oh, how do I say, ill-informed ridicule doesn't really affect me um, in the same way as it mm. once did. And I think also, um, well, I think particularly the work in Catholic education, some days you just have mm. to, like, get the courage in your heart mm. to go out mm. there and do Me your too. best and to be explicit mm. and you know we're always talking about the word and scripture yeah, and puts yeah. scripture scripture and you have to say about 88 times until it dawns on someone and then they look like oh you're just telling me for the first time you think oh, I've been at it for about six years now but okay <laughs> yeah. let, let's let's go on the journey so uh, however, I agree with David that however tiring it might be or ridicule at moments, it's nothing in comparison, while well, I look at it, to, to the price people have paid for the last 2,000 years. So um, I did the little Australia Talks, it's an ABC survey. I thought I was quite average really, I'm peculiar, because there's only about <laughs> 11 or 12 percent of us where religion is important in your life. That, that was a bit... You know, I thought, oh, that can't be right, I'll do that bit again, no? no. no. So, it, it wasn't ridiculing, but you did think, oh, I am a real outsider in my own society. No, that's the case, it is. <laughs> so, um, so mm. I think though, but we're being warned, you know, yes. it's, that's what it's about. And I'm yeah. sure many, many people in the past suffered far greater for that yes. than that's I've it. ever had to suffer, so yeah. No. Well, thank you. You have heard the response of David, Virginia and I to the Word of God we've shared with you a first time 
and invite you now just to take a few moments to sit with that word, reflect upon it. What is it that might uh, come to you and offer you some insight or challenges that might confront you just for a few moments before we continue? We welcome you back as we continue our Lexia Reflection on the Gospel of the 33rd Sunday and invite you to listen to the reading of this Sunday's Gospel once again. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another all will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be, and what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And Jesus said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance you will gain your souls. The thought that came to me there was that this was an opportunity to testify that um, it sounds like a terrible situation, but it is a time when we are able to, to bear witness, to withdraw and sort of pretend that we're not Catholic, um, would not be what the Lord is asking us to mm. do, that in the face of this opposition, we need to stand firm. Um, there was a, a psychologist that came out to Australia recently, I forget his name, but he was a very well-known psychologist, and he had a list of things that people should do in their life. He wasn't a Catholic. But standing firm was a very important mm -hmm. one for him. And I think that's what witnessing is about, is standing firm in our faith, uh, in the face of all that opposition. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to reflect on, am I standing firm and letting people know what I believe when the occasion arises? I think of um, something Pope Francis said on one occasion that in the midst of all of the turmoil, the pain, the suffering, we can still be people of hope. And uh, this gospel reminds me of that, the need to still be hope-filled, hopeful, in, the spite, in spite of what goes on around me or within me. And uh, that's the realisation that in all of this I'm not alone. I'm in the company of fellow believers, I'm in the company of the one whose life I share through baptism, and I need to dwell on that, to be more and more convicted of, of this truth, that I can find a, st a still point in a turning world because of the presence of this God in Christ in my life. For me, I'm not quite sure why, but um, that last line that you're not alone and not a hair of your head will be in her Thanks because you, I will be there with you. I'm being serious now, John. But I, I, I don't know why, but my response to this is, 
commitment to continually, continually read the scripture. Go back there and read that scripture. I need to be constantly reminded of what it means, actually, um, to be a follower. So my take home is continue to read and reflect on the scripture. Please take some time now to reflect again on the word that we've shared with you from the gospel of this Sunday and to tease out of it something that is pertinent to, to your life that you really want to sit with through the course of this coming week and allow it to be a turning point, a, a transformation point in your own life, a point that draws you closer into that relationship with the living God. We know that we're not capable of, of honouring the, the little challenges that we give to ourselves in the course of life. So let's take a moment, all of us, together to pray that we will be strengthened by the awareness of the Spirit of God with us, strengthening us and enabling us to honour a commitment that we make to be close to that God through because we have shared God's Word this Sunday. Well, it's been a privilege for us to be joined by you at the, the Centre for Christian Spirituality, reflecting on uh, the Gospel of this particular Sunday. And we invite you to join us again next week when we will reflect on the last Sunday of the Church's year, the Great Feast of Christ the King. As we conclude our time of reflection today, let's listen to the, and be part of the spirit of the prayer of the liturgy of this 33rd Sunday. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good, through Christ our Lord.